The first thing I'm going to do the tutorial on, I zoom the camera in really close so you can see all the stitches, uh, but we're going to be doing lavender. For each bouquet I do about four lavender and then different shades of purple to make it look, you know, really pretty. And the lavender is super simple too. The pattern is created by another YouTuber. I'll link her video in the description, um, but I'll just do a quick recap on how I do it. So first things first is the hook that I use. I use a 3.75 millimeter hook. Um, I find this is the best hook to make the lavender the size that it is. And then I use a weight three yarn, so a light yarn. And we're gonna start with a slip knot. So I'm just gonna create one like that and put it on to my hook and pull it tight. And now we're gonna do chains. So we're gonna chain 58. And to do a chain, you're just gonna wanna grab the yarn, yarn it over and pull through. So grab the yarn, pull through, grab the yarn, pull through. And keep doing that for a total of 58 chains. And that's gonna be the length of the lavender. If you want the lavender to be a little bit shorter or even longer, you can keep adding chains. I just find 58 is like a good amount for the bouquet that I do, but obviously it depends on the type of stick that you're gonna be putting it on as well. So, 58. I just changed 58. We're gonna start making the like ruffles in the lavender. I guess they're ruffles. Um, and we're gonna be doing some double crochets. These are the only double crochets that you're gonna need to be doing for the lavender, which I know is a bit harder for beginners, but I'm gonna try and explain it as best as I can. So you're just gonna yarn over like this and into the third stitch from the hook, we're gonna insert three double crochets. So for the third stitch from the hook, we're gonna count one, two, three. So into this stitch and we have that yarn over to get us ready for the double crochet. And you're just gonna to wanna to go into the top part of it. Yarn over again, pull through the first loop, then yarn over, pull through two loops, yarn over, pull through two loops. And we'll do it again, so yarn over into that stitch, yarn over again, pull through the first loop, yarn over, pull through the two loops, and then yarn over and pull through the last two loops. And that's the hard part. <laughs> the rest of the lavender is very easy to do. To finish this part off, we're gonna chain two, and then we're gonna do a slip stitch back into the same stitch that we just put all the double crochets on. So I'm gonna put my hook in, and to do a slip stitch, we just yarn over and pull through the first loop and then we just pull through that last loop as well. And that's the slip stitch. We're gonna be doing the slip stitch a lot um, for the lavender and I'll show you now. So now we're gonna be working in the next stitch, no more working in the same stitch. And we're gonna slip stitch there. So put your yarn through that stitch, yarn over, pull through, and then continue to pull through. And now we're gonna chain seven and these are gonna make up the little ruffles. So to chain again, I'll show you, yarn over and just pull through. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And that's kind of our first one that we've got here. And we're gonna go back into that same stitch and we're gonna slip stitch again. So yarn over and pull through the loops. And just like that, that is our first ruffle. Now to keep doing this, we're going to have to do this all the way down the chains. <laughs> this usually takes me a while. So we're going to keep doing the exact same pattern that I just repeated starting from the slip stitch chain seven. So into the next stitch, we're going to slip stitch and then chain seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then back into that same stitch, we're going to slip stitch. Okay, and I'll do it a couple more times. Um, into the next stitch, we're gonna slip stitch, chain seven. And then slip stitch into that same stitch. And you're just gonna wanna keep doing this all the way down until you reach the end, because this is what's gonna make up our lavender. And you'll see once you get about halfway with the chains that it'll really start looking like the lavender. We'll just continue doing this down all of the 58 chains and then I'll see you when it's done.
Okay, so I've almost um, completed the lavender. I just have one stitch left and I'll show you how I finish this off. So we're just gonna do it as normal. So slip stitch into that stitch and chain seven. And then we're gonna slip stitch back into it. And then I'm just gonna grab my scissors and just cut. So once that's snipped, I usually do it about this long because when we attach it to the stem, we're actually gonna secure it with glue and with a knot at the end. Um, but for now, we still have that loop on our hook and we're just going to fasten off and to fasten off, we just pull like that. And then I like to pull it tight. And then you have the whole lavender. And for my bouquets, I do four of them and I kind of like doing them in different colors. I have three of the same purple, but that's okay because I'm doing a purple bouquet for this video. Um, but yeah, so that's how you do that. <laughs> The next flower I'm going to be doing is the tulip. And I'm just going to be using the exact same hook, so the 3.75 millimeter, and the same yarn as well, same weight, which is um, weight 3, or some people call it light weight yarn. We're going to start with a magic ring. Now, magic rings can be very intimidating for beginners. <laughs> I'm going to try and explain it the best way that I can. We're going to take two fingers, our middle and our pointer and we're gonna put the yarn here. And on your pointer finger, put your thumb right here. Now we're gonna take this yarn and we're gonna twist it. So twist it like this, so that you have an X, just like that. If you see my thumb kind of shifted as I was twisting it, that's fine. I like to kind of make the X right in between my fingers, but sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't. We have this X and this is what it looks like on the other side. So on the other side of your fingers, the yarn should not be crossing, but on this side it should be. And we're gonna take our hook and we're gonna go under this piece of yarn here, grab this one and pull it through and kind of twist to secure. And then I grab my thumb, which takes a little bit of practicing and I pinch these pieces of yarn here to hold it in place. And once it's held in place, you just want to chain one. And this is what the magic ring looks like. See, we can pull it tighter if we do this loose end here, like that, but we won't be doing that right now. We're gonna do 10 single crochets into the magic ring. So we're gonna chain one because I'm doing the chain one method to join the rounds together. And we're gonna crochet into the magic ring. So put your hook into that circle, yarn over and pull through the circle and then yarn over and pull through both of these loops on your hook. So that's what a single crochet is. I'll do it again. So we're gonna go into the ring, yarn over, pull through the ring, and then yarn over and pull through both loops on the hook. We're gonna keep doing this for a total of 10 times and that'll, that'll be our 10 single crochets into the magic ring. single crochets into the magic ring and now is when we're going to pull it close so we're gonna take this loose end that we had that I showed before and I like to just you know grab the chains and once you pull it the hole will start to close I'll move my hook so you can see it a little better pull it and I try to do it as tight as possible but I find that with the tulips there's always going to be a little gap in there no matter how hard I try to pull it if you pull it too hard, the yarn might snap, so just be careful with that. But it's okay because this is where our stem is going to be going anyways. Now we're gonna start working on our second round. So this was our first round, uh, the 10 single crochets into the magic circle. And now we're gonna increase in each stitch. So we're gonna find that first stitch that we did. And the easiest way to do this is to count from the last stitch we did. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. So this is our first stitch that we did. And I'm gonna go into it the full top of the stitch and I'm going to slip stitch so we already learned how to slip stitch <laughs> and then I'm going to chain one because this is the chain one method alternatively you can just do the rounds that a lot of people like doing where you just increase you know as you go but I like the chain one method for the tulips it makes them look a lot more round and we're going to increase so to do the single crochet we're going to go back into that hook and just do a single crochet and into that same stitch 
we're gonna do another single crochet. And that's what an increase is. It's basically two of the same stitch into the same stitch. <laughs> that sounds confusing, but two single crochets into the same stitch. And we're gonna keep doing that all around until we have a total of 20 stitches for the second round. So I'll show it again. So we're gonna go into this stitch, so the next stitch, do a single crochet, and then go back into that stitch and do another single crochet. Okay, so that's our increase. Then we're gonna go into this stitch, increase and do single crochet. Into the next stitch, we're gonna do that increase. And then increase. And you're just gonna keep doing that around until you have 20 stitches. If it helps, you can use a stitch marker. Um, but since I kind of know like how big the tulips and the rounds are gonna be, I don't really use a stitch marker for the tulips, but there's no shame in using a stitch marker. I use a stitch marker for everything else. Um, but yeah, if you were going to use the stitch marker, you would just put it into that first stitch of the round that you did, and then you would be able to tell where it starts and what when your round ends. So I'm approaching the end of the round, so I'm gonna do my last increase into this stitch here. Now the thing you have to look out for if you are doing the chain one method is to make sure you're not doing an increase into that chain. So over here is the chain one that we did at the start of the round and we're not going to crochet into that. A good way to you know prevent you from doing that is if you just count if you have 20 stitches. So I know I have 20 stitches here so I'm not going to be doing an increase there. And now we're going to start on round three. We're going to go into that first stitch that we did for the second round and we're going to slip stitch. And then chain one. This is how we're gonna be starting every round. After we chain one, we're gonna do an increase. So the exact same thing that we did. So going back into that stitch, I don't know why I was doing <laughs> Going back into that stitch with a single crochet and then another single crochet into that exact same stitch. And now into the next stitch, instead of doing the increase, we're just gonna place a single crochet. So that's gonna be the pattern for the third round, an increase and then a single crochet. So into the next stitch, we're gonna do the increase. And then into that next stitch, we're gonna do single crochet. Into the next stitch, increase. And into the next stitch, single crochet. You know you'll be doing this correct if you end on a single crochet at the end of your round. We'll just keep doing that until we end on our single crochet. I have my last two stitches of the round, so we're gonna increase. And then end off with that single crochet. And that's the third round. The next um, 13 rounds are going to be exactly the same and it's just going to be a single crochet in each stitch all around until you have a total of 16 rounds. So we just did our three, so these are our first three rounds, and then we're going to do 13 rounds of single crochet. So we're going to slip stitch into that first stitch like we've been doing, chain one, and then back into that stitch we're going to insert a single crochet. And then into that next stitch we're going to do a single crochet. And then into the next stitch, single crochet, into the next one, single crochet, and we're just doing single crochet all around. And at the end of each round, you're going to do the exact same thing, slip stitch and chain one to join the rounds together, and then you're going to continue doing this until you have 13 rounds. I'm going to finish this one off and then show you how to do it again, and then I will come back when I'm done the tulip and we'll stuff it and sew the top together. I'm just finishing up the last single crochet for this round. And then we're going to go into the first single crochet that we did to join the two rounds together. So slip stitch, chain one. And like I said, we're just gonna keep doing this, um, the single crochets in every stitch for 13 more rounds for a total of 16 rounds for the tulip. 
so this was my last single crochet of round 16. As you can see on the 16th round, it'll start to form this kind of like little cup shape. And to finish the 16th round off, which is our last round, we're gonna slip stitch into that first stitch. And we're not gonna chain one, but we're just gonna grab our scissors. And I like to cut a little bit of a longer um, tail is what it's called because we're going to be sewing the tulip together and then just pull up here to fasten off. Before we sew, we're going to have to stuff the tulip to give it its round shape. So I just take some polyfill, um, but you can use any teddy bear stuffing. It just looks like this. And you're just going to want to stuff the tulip. How much stuffing you use will shape the tulip to be either more round or more slim. I don't put in too much stuffing because I like my tulips to be a little bit more slim. But yeah, I do about that much stuffing just so it's a little squishy, squishy enough. And then to finish this off, we're going to grab that tail end and a darning needle or a sewing needle and we're going to thread that through. and now we're going to sew the tulip shut. So I like to close it together in the middle as much as I can. And I'm going to go through the stitch with the slip stitch and then right across into the other stitch and just pull it close. To make it extra secure, I just go and do that one more time and pull it tight. So now you have something that should look like this. I'm gonna go under the middle stitch here and towards this end pull that and once you pull it it'll create those little the top of the tulip and I just go back into that and do the same on the other side and once you pull everything together and make sure the stuffing is under then you have this cute little tulip shape it depends on how secure you want it. I like keeping my bouquets really secure. So I'm gonna do a couple of these little like knots a little bit, just to make sure that they do not come apart. Once I feel like it's secure enough, you could just take the darning needle and go all the way through the tulip and out the center like that we did the magic ring in and I just pull it through and I pull the yarn through and this is what we're going to be using to secure the tulip onto the stem. There you go. So that's the tulip. It's basically like a little ball with little spikes on top but it's so cute once you put it into the bouquet. The next flower is the white puppy flower. Again, I'm using the 3.75 millimeter hook and the weight three yarn, but I do prefer using weight four yarn for this sometimes because it makes the flower look a little bit fuller. We're gonna start with um, a chain. So we're gonna chain 53 and I'm pretty sure by now we're all familiar with the chains. So I'm just gonna do 53 chains. Right, so here's all the chains. We're gonna start the next round into the second um, stitch from the hook. This is our first stitch and then our second stitch here. And into that, we are just going to place a single crochet. Next, you're gonna chain two. And now we're gonna be skipping some stitches. So as you can see here, this is our next stitch, but we're gonna skip it and insert a single crochet into this stitch instead. Again, skipping this chain, but going into the other one, put a single crochet, and then chain two. We're gonna continue this all the way down. So skip this stitch, but into the next stitch, put a single crochet. And we're gonna insert the hook, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through two loops. Then chain two again, skip this stitch, put into this stitch, single crochet, chain two, and just continue doing this all the way down until you reach the end. 
Alright, so I just finished up this row, and as you can see, the chain 2 allowed us to create some little gaps, and it's in the next row that we're going to do um, our stitches into these gaps over here. For the next row, we're going to chain 2, 1, 2, and then we're going to flip our work, and that just means turning it over like this, so that we can work in this direction now. Into this first gap, we're going to insert our hook and do a slip stitch. So grab that yarn and just pull through. And then we're going to chain one and we're going to continue working in this gap. We're going to do three half double crochets into the gap. So yarn over into the gap, do a half double crochet, yarn over, half double crochet, yarn over, half double crochet. So there are three half double crochets in the gap now. And we're gonna chain one again, and then slip stitch into that same gap. And that's gonna be the pattern for this row. You're gonna continue this in each gap. I'll do it again. So this is the next one. We're going to slip stitch, chain one, three half double crochets into that gap. chain one and slip stitch and you're just going to do that all the way down the row onto the last gap Now all of the flowers are done. We have the lavender, the puffy flower, and the tulip. And now it's time to attach them onto the stem. I use 18 gauge floral wire. And since I want the stems to be green, I wrap it in sage green yarn using this tacky glue that I got from Walmart. It's a huge tube. I think it was like $6 and it has lasted me every single bouquet that I've ever made. And the floral wire just looks like this, and it comes in a pack of 20, and it's 18 gauge. You could go for like a thicker wire as well, or even wooden sticks would work perfectly fine. For the tulip, um, the pattern of the tulip left a little gap in the magic ring. You're just gonna wanna put, once everything's dry, the stem, if you are wrapping it in yarn, um, put a little bit of glue on the end and just stick it about halfway through the tulip. My wire ends about right here and it's gonna stick onto the stuffing and not come off. This glue is also um, very strong, so you're not gonna have any problems with the flowers falling off. Just let it dry and snip off the excess yarn. For the puffy flower, again, you're gonna wrap the yarn um, around the wire. I'm just showing with like a blank wire um, and apply some glue to the end of it and just stick it through and it should stick perfectly fine. I kind of like to it's a bit harder when the glue is on, but the glue does dry clear, so don't be afraid to like get it everywhere. And once that's done, I also secure it with a knot here. And then once the glue is dry, you can snip off the excess yarn, and then that would be the puffy flower. Finally is the lavender. So for the lavender, I'll insert a little clip at the side of how to do it. Basically, you have your wire wrapped in the yarn or however you're decorating the wire. And you're just going to want to put glue all along the wire and wrap the lavender, kind of twisting it like this, so I'm just moving it like that, and grabbing it and twisting it around, and it creates sort of this layered effect of the petals, which is so cool. And once all of your flowers are done, I like to cut them kind of all the same length. The lavender I leave the longest, so I'm just going to cut off the excess yarn here, 
throw that to the side. And I'm just using scissors from Walmart, um, but wire cutters work a lot better and don't hurt your hand as much. And I like to cut them to the length that I like. This is the length I like it. And I cut all the lavender the same size. The tulips I make just a little bit shorter. I'll try to show a comparison. Um, so that in the bouquet they kind of have a layered look, but you can totally leave all the flowers the exact same size if you want. And the puffy flowers I make a little bit taller than the tulips. I realized I never mentioned the materials you need for the wrapping part, so you're just gonna need tissue paper from Dollarama or Dollar Store, uh, the twine, or you can use yarn as well, and then brown paper. I used to get this at the Dollar Store. They don't have it anymore, so I got it from the post office. It's just craft brown paper. It's a little bit thicker than what I used to use, but it still works. After that, I cut a almost square of brown paper, and I like to do it a little bit shorter than the length of the flowers because I like the top of the flowers to stick out of the wrapping. Next, what I've done, so I folded up the bottom part and then these two sides, the top, uh, leave unfolded or else it might look a bit weird. Um, so I just did that and then you're just gonna wanna place your bouquet on the paper and adjust it to how much you want it to stick out. And basically now, what we're gonna do with one hand <laughs> is fold the two pieces of brown paper over like this and secure with the twine in the middle. I'll have to do this off camera because I only have one hand available, but it's gonna fan out the brown paper and then you can always adjust it. So I've secured with a little bow in the middle. I do it quite loose because if you crinkle it too much, then the end part of the bouquet will look a little bit weird. But yeah, that's how you wrap the bouquets. If you're anything like me, you'll probably get obsessed with making these and you'll have 10 in your room at a time. 